Okay, good morning. Good morning. A few flurries out there. Well, I think we'll have a good time here today with the Lord. It's number 50 in the All-American, or not the All-American, the Great Hymns of Faith, excuse me. Uh, the regular hymn book we have in the pews there, number 50. <clears throat> Fairest Lord Jesus. Savior, amen. Beautiful. Savior, the creator of the world. Thank you, Father, for your great blessings that you've given us through Jesus Christ, being able to be reconciled back to you from the finished work of Calvary, Lord, how wonderful it is. Lord, if there's ever anyone that has not been saved yet, then, Lord, they hear this message that they might trust in Jesus Christ before it's too late. Now is the time. Uh, don't put it off. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us now with this time to be together and ask for those coming in, give them safety, Lord, and uh, take care of the weather for us to clear us out for, so we can make it here and back, Lord, safely and all these things. We're in your hands, and we thank you for that, the safest hands in the world. We love you. Amen. <clears throat> That song sheets that you have, now we're not going to sing all those songs today, okay? <laughs> but there are different ones I want to refer to. And uh, there are some on here. Uh, well, number 85, if you find that one, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. Uh, there are so many great songs and hymns written about the first coming of Christ. Uh, that in a, a month's time of services, we just can't get through all of them once, <laughs> let alone learn them. But uh, this one, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come, is another one written by uh, Martin Luther. 
And uh, David Cloud did a real wonderful article this week on, on uh, Martin Luther, his works, and his hymns, and the depth, the depth of scripture in his writings and in his hymns. And uh, based on uh, uh, Martin Luther's testimony in his writings, uh, and the end of his uh, life as he spent the number of years in exile, hiding from the uh, ones in the Roman Catholic Church that had decreed he was worthy of death for heresy and his books and things. Uh, and they never, the Lord just protected him and he was able to translate the Bible into the common tongue of German in the English language so that everybody could understand it. And God granted that. Uh, now, <laughs> he was a, what they say, an old hard-headed German. And he was, a, uh, boy, he put his head mind to something. Like the, the problem in the monastery and with the Catholic Church that he had was figuring out when have I done enough? When, when will I have enough, you know, all these indulgences and all these um, things, they've tortures they put themselves through and all this stuff. Uh, when he finally found in Galatians that it's by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Uh, wow, the load's lifted according to his testimony, you know, that, and from then on, uh, his works had a great change. Now, one thing to remember about these, uh, these men uh, he's famous for posting 95 statements of thesis on the church door at Wittenberg. Uh, Do you ever think about, was that the Lutheran church door that he put them on? I mean, think back now. This is before the Reformation. And so he was called to Rome to stand for his heresies. He was a priest in the Catholic church and he was uh, that was a Catholic church that he posted those uh, theses on uh, about, big part of it was about indulgences and, and that you can't, buy, you can't buy redemption for your sins, it's only through Jesus Christ. And, and so there was a lot involved there, but I think often we think about the Lutheran church, that Luther started, Luther, listen, I don't believe Luther started the Lutheran church at all. It was a movement that Luther was strong for against the heresies taught in the Catholic Church, and he wanted the Catholic Church to correct their heresies. <laughs> well, the Pope didn't go along with them. The Pope said, uh, no, uh, you're gonna die <laughs> for writing these things and stirring up people against us. Well, then the Lutheran Church came together and was developed as a church, but he was in hiding, translating the Bible for years. Uh, and so I don't believe he was a, a real major former. Yes, he was the leader of the movement, so to speak. But as far as the, the ins and outs of the Catholic, of the Lutheran church, that came from all these other, uh, you'd all, you'd, what you'd really say today, you'd say, well, this is the reformed Catholic church that they started. Well, that's what they wanted. They wanted to reform the Catholic church, but it, it uh, never came out. So. You want to remember there were no Lutheran pastors before this time. Uh, when you think about that, you think about, oh, they're all Catholic priests, weren't they? That's a, that's a great change uh, in a whole country to see, uh, follow and see the heresies because Luther took the word of God and compared it with what the Catholic Church was teaching. And the Catholic Church didn't measure up. And so, of course, they wanted, to, wanted him to die. They sentenced him to death. Uh, but the Lord had other ideas for him. Uh, so when you put all this together, you know, I, I don't look at him as a great Lutheran. I look at him as a man that was used by the Lord. And so uh, uh, it is, uh, when I saw that article, I gave a little of my testimony to Brother Cloud. We've been conversing a lot. Uh, and... Uh, just, just about these things. And because uh, one of the things from way back when I first met him years ago, um, being a past Lutheran, he says, he always asked me, do you think Luther was saved? I said, well, I, I think that from his testimonies, he was saved by grace in Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, in that sense, I would believe that, but I says, I'm not the judge, God knows. And so, 
you know, we'd always wind up with that, well, I don't know, but God does. I just look at what he did and, and his uh, attitude and his writings towards the word of God and towards God himself. And uh, he was a strong man <clears throat> in what he believed. So uh, whatever, whatever that is, I mean, see, you can talk about these guys. Uh, like when I came here, one of the big things was, who's, uh, do you believe in Calvinism? And I said, well, Calvin's just a man. I, don't, I said, where he agrees with the Bible, I agree with him. Where he doesn't, I don't. So it, see, that's, that's the way you got to look at these things. And you say, well, did Luther ever come out of the Catholic Church completely? Well, he didn't want to, but he was expelled from it by the Pope. Uh, and so in his heart, he just wanted to have a pure church based on the word of God, which he originally had been told the Catholic Church was under the, uh, the, uh, the Pope and all the uh, monasteries, you know, where he was and things. So his teachers. Uh, anyway, he, so he wrote several songs and we're going to be looking at some of these, uh, but this one, I just wanted to, this is a, a Christmas carol that we learned, a Christmas uh, hymn that we learned when we were young people. I mean, before we were able to, to read and write why we were singing this song and others like it. Uh, of course, the cradle song that many people have heard of. Uh, but here, from heaven above to earth I come to bear good news to every home. Glad tidings of great joy I bring, whereof I now will say and sing. Uh, and so look at the words. It's very simple. He has a very simple way of writing things, uh, scripturally uh, writing them. So let's sing this. Let's see. Uh, one through seven, let's sing verses, stanzas one through seven right now, and then we'll pause and I'll talk a little bit more about this. But I, what I want to do this hour is look at some of the old hymns. Hymn preaching. Uh, there are hymns that are so in depth in the Word of God that you, if you don't see all the different verses popping up in your mind as you read the poetry or the lyrics of these hymns, uh, then you need to read your Bible more so that you do see them. Because so many of these uh, hymns and the hymns in our hymn book, uh, you can sing and, and even not knowing what brought them on and why the writer wrote them, which is always interesting to look at that too. Uh, we've done that a lot. Uh, but it's just the basic fact, are they scriptural? And so let's sing this and, and you look at it and think of the verses as you see different things. That, uh, that would apply to the Word of God. From the first through the seventh stanza about Christ's first coming. From heaven above to earth I come to bear good news to every home. Glad tidings of Oh, 
So that's the start of it, the Lord coming to earth. And uh, as he wrote this, these verses of prose, of verses that are in here, uh, then he goes into the second part of it here is, uh, well, verse eight, welcome to earth, thou noble guest. <laughs> and so now he comes with, uh, he's here, and now we're going to welcome him here and show what he's going to do uh, with this time on the earth that he has come for. And so the, these next few stanzas then, or the rest of them here, are, have to do with just the wonderful things about Jesus' first coming and why they're so important. Because without the first coming, there'd be no second coming. And there'd be no salvation through Jesus Christ. So let's uh, sing now. Well, stanzas 8 through 15. We can start with the piano again, okay? <clears throat> Welcome to earth, thou noble guest, through whom the sinful world is blessed. Thou comes to share my misery with thanks shall so rough whereon thou king so rich and great as twere thy heaven art throned in state and thus dear lord it pleaseth thee to make this truth quite plain to see that all the world's wealth, honor, might are not and worthless in thy sight. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft undefiled within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee my heart for very joy doth leap my lips no more can silence keep I too to sing with joyful tongue that sweetest ancient cradle song. Glory to God in highest heaven, who unto us his Son hath given 
while angels sing with pious mirth a glad new year to all the earth. One of my old childhood favorite Christmas songs tell them about Christ's great work here came to earth and op once you'd open your heart to him so you can be uh, with the Father, reconciled to the Father. How wonderful it is to sing these old songs. Now, <clears throat> again, the, the Lutheran Church, uh, as it was still called when I was a child, was called the Singing Church. There were no other churches that loved singing, and there were so many uh, German hymns written that they were singing and known as the Singing Church. Uh, the big thing was that they were used to Catholic churches where only the choir, or the elite singers sing, nobody else says anything in the church. And so uh, not only did Luther include everybody in the church in the scripture and having scripture in their homes uh, of their own to read and to study, uh, he did that with singing. He wanted everybody involved in it. And as I've, we've witnessed a number of times, my wife and I, how uh, these songs that we learned before we could even read and write, these hymns come back to us, have come back all our life for uh, 70 some years now since we learned them. And it, it just continually happens. And so I'm going to look at a few other songs too that that has happened with. And, and I now and then mention that when I, I sing a special song or something about a particular uh, doctrine or teaching that we're doing how uh, these songs were written for specific things. They're good, they're good for uh, learning as Ephesians and uh, Colossians talk about. So, <clears throat> one of the songs, well, how many, how many churches would sing, they'd look at this and they go, whoa, there's something wrong with that one. <laughs> Too many stanzas, you know, don't fit our, don't fit our time, okay? We can, we can only sing the first, second, and last. What stupidity. I mean, uh, can you see how much you would have missed if you'd have sung the first, second, and last? Would you have gotten the feeling of what is being written down about our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming to the earth? Uh, so you see, it's a poem. You, you don't write poems. Anybody that's written poems, several of you in here have that ability. And, and uh, when you write something down, uh, you want people to read the whole thing. You want the whole thing to be together. You don't want just bits and pieces. I've often said, do you take your favorite storybook that you love 